All right, so now we're going to talk about how you add a non root user to your Docker image and then how you use the exact same process that we used earlier to get up and running with a conda environment and then to actually start using your image. So um, the beginning looks exactly the same. You have your from, we're going to install some packages, and then this is where things start to get a little bit different. We are actually going to run add user set the home directory flask. So if you'll notice, this looks exactly how it does in a regular Linux environment. We're just running it in our Docker container. And then from there, you are setting your user. The username is Flask. And this is because we're going to use this example later to actually deploy a Flask application. So I just named my user Flask. Name your user whatever you want. From there, we're going to set the working directory. Um, I'm going to make some directories, set the working directory again. And then, you know, and then I'm going to start copying some things. But then what I really want to show you is that down here, these conda environmental uh, prefixes and things, they are a little bit different because the base conda is still in slash OPT slash conda. But then when you install conda like as a user, it's, it's always home, the username, dot conda envs and then the environment name so that's just it's just a little bit different it's something to keep in mind so if you're running um if you're installing conda environments and conda packages as a non-root user this is how they install this user uh home user dot conda and flask app okay everything else is the same and then you also have to modify your path as well so but besides that everything else is the same so just to kind of make it a bit clearer, I'll just put this down here. So conda exe, conda python exe, conda prompt modifier, and conda default n, all of these stay the same because these are still based off of the uh, just the base conda that's already installed in the image. And then these are the ones that you modify for the user. The conda prefix, which is like the current conda environment that we're using, and our path and path is the environmental variable that tells our shell oh where can i get executables so then you know if it's looking for python if it's looking for flask if it's or not flask because flask is an executable um if it's looking for python if it's looking for r if it's looking for conda whatever it's looking for look here in the path and what happens is that first it looks in this part of the path here and then you see this uh, this colon separator and then it will look in the next and then the next and then the next and then the next so that is always you know that's always the way that that's done but you just want to make sure that your environment is this first record in the path so this is my conda end and then slash bin is always going to be uh, is always going to be the path so that's it um, you know it's always best practices to actually have a non root user in your Docker images. I don't always do that, um, but you know, but you should, it's, it's the best thing to do. It's not that much harder to do. You can see like, you know, you just add your users and you just carry on with your life. Once you're there, everything else is exactly the same. There are also some applications that will like either very loudly complain or just straight out, they just refuse to even operate if they're under root users. So for instance, Celery, uh, it complains that it, like that it doesn't like being run as root and then it also gives this warning like oh in future versions we won't allow this at all i don't know if that's just to scare people into you know into using non-root users or not but it's always better just use a non-root user you know here it is here you go as a very simple word of um of warning if you're doing anything where you are mounting file system paths from your host to your docker container and you're not using root um, that can get a little bit funny because then you won't always have permissions to write on those mounted directories in your container. <clears throat> you know, like you usually have permissions to read from them, but not always to write from them. So that can get a little bit complicated. That's the most common reason why I just kind of ignore all the warnings and all the things that, that Celery or Easy Build or whatever is telling me not to do and just do it anyways. But um, just so you know, that's the only hang up. On Mac, they act a little bit different, and so you should be totally fine with this setup. But, um, but that's it. That's it for this lesson. So I hope that you can see exactly how you go through and you add the user, 
Again, add your user, move on over, set the, actually set the user here is this um, Docker directive, move on over to this working directory. <clears throat> and that's it. Then, you know, off you go, business as usual. Thanks.